Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. Thousands of St. Lucians celebrated their Creole culture with the traditional Jeune Creole festivities. The SLHD joins forces with the government for the creation of the National Tourism Security Plan. The Ministry of Education completes remedial works at the Andropos Secondary School. All that plus the latest development in youth and sports. The communities of Beausejou, Grosley, Chauzel, and Viefort on Monday, 28th October were still basking in the success of the annual Jeune Creole celebrations as booths, stages, and other structures erected for the hosting of the festivities were being removed. Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose, has lauded St. Lucians for embracing their culture and setting new avenues for its growth. Here's Anissa Antoine. St. Lucian residents and tourists alike got a taste of nostalgia in communities around the island as they celebrated Creole Day 2019. The celebration featured a mix of Creole food, music, games and folklore that represents St. Lucia's unique heritage of Caribbean, African and European cultures. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for culture and creative industries, Senator Fortuna Bell Rose, deemed Jeune Creole a success. The events were well patronized in terms of people coming out um, to see what was happening in previous times. But more importantly, I think the clean air experience was what really struck quite a few people. Um, so people indulged a lot in the food and the drink. Um, and of course, there was quite a bit of the cultural activities, creative um, events um, going on, on stage and off stage as well, um, in the communities. Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose commended the organizing bodies for their efforts in ensuring the success of Jeune Creole 2019. The events were well patronized, well supported. The system seemed to have worked very well, um, and we're quite happy with the feedback. Um, of course, the Folk Research Centre now will be detailing and looking at it in terms of our Creole heritage and what was actually showcased and um, where they would like to see it go. Um, but in terms of us from the event, the management of people, the management of traffic, um, and of course ensuring that our vendors, um, our people in communities benefited from it. I think we saw a lot of that happening yesterday. The Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries was pleased that the essence of the celebrations was celebrated in all parts of the island and not only the host communities. There is also the need to ensure that our communities continue to stay strong. Um, um, and in fact, when, we, when I spoke to the FRC, the, the, the thought has always been to ensure that each of the communities celebrate the Jeune Creole, you know, um, in their own way. You know, and so it's something that we will continue to pursue with them to ensure that communities get ready and communities are fixed in a way that they can accommodate people when they come in. We need to ensure that the infrastructure is there around the communities so people can come in and out with ease. Creole Day was celebrated on Sunday, October 27th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. We have comprehensive coverage of Jeune Creole later in the broadcast, but first, Monday, 28th October, is celebrated annually as International Creole Day. The Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center, FRC, commemorated the occasion with the hosting of a national conference on the Creole language. Since 1984, International Creole Day has been celebrated in countries where the Creole language is spoken, while Antillean Creole is spoken within the Caribbean, in St. Lucia, Dominica, Guadeloupe, Martinique and Haiti, other forms of Creole are spoken in the Indian Ocean, in Seychelles and Réunion. On Monday, October 28th, St. Lucians came together to reflect on what the Creole language means to them and the strides that have been made in developing and using the language. Dame Paulette Louise spoke on the major milestones that have been achieved in the development of the language in St. Lucia. In 1981, we had the first of two regional workshops organized by the Folk Research Center and the National Research and Development Foundation, the NRDF, for those who are old enough to remember that there was uh, an entity by the name of NRDF. And that workshop was on language and development, the St. Lucian context. In 1982, we held the second regional workshop and this time it was uh, under the, the theme, the development of Antillean Creole. 
It was a, a, a suggestion by um, Professor La Lawrence Carrington to, to call the lung, this Creole that we were going to be using um, in, the, in the Antilles, to refer to it not just as Creole, but Antillian Creole. Other milestones include the development of a Creole dictionary, the featuring of Creole in the throne speech, and the approved Creole version of St. Lucia's national anthem. A three-year program will commence in 2020, where Creole will be taught from kindergarten to grade three. The St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association's Tourism Enhancement Fund successfully facilitated a workshop on tourism safety and security for over 200 persons last week. The workshop led by international safety and security expert, Dr. Peter Tallow, was attended by a large cross-section of hospitality and security professionals. Held from the 22nd to the 25th of October, the four one-day sessions in Castries and Soufria included representatives from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Port and City Police, as well as members of the Immigration Department. Also in attendance were beach vendors, jet ski operators, taxi drivers, vendors from Castries, Grosley and Soufra, and a number of local tour guides. Dr. Peter Tallow is a world-renowned speaker and expert specializing in such areas as the impact of crime and terrorism on the tourism industry, event and tourism risk management, and economic development. This is his third visit to the island. Dr. Tallow has been working closely with the association over the last year to advance safety and security efforts in the local tourism industry including the development of a national tourism security plan being birthed in conjunction with the government of St. Lucia. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development on the weekends completed remedial works at the Antipo Secondary School. The school was closed last week to address a mold infestation. Fiona Meyer is the Chief Education Officer. September 24th, we had received an initial set of rooms to be highlighted and taken care of reference equality. That was done and monies were mobilized as of the 8th of October where a comprehensive assessment of the plant was done. We had works completed. Subsequent to that, we received another set of rooms and other set of areas that were highlighted as concern areas. We have moved in with a licensed contractor and have completed those works. The chief education officer says all schools should join the ministry in ensuring that structural deficiencies do not fester. We would like to encourage, recommend that consistent cleaning happens at the schools, all of our schools. We can appreciate that there may be need for deep cleaning, but it is really a situation where with a consistent approach that includes monitoring of what happens in terms of the cleaning will ensure that some of those issues that we have do not come to the fore. We remain resolute as a Ministry of Education team to ensure that we become more proactive in terms of maintenance of our plants and avoid some of those issues. Classes at the Antropo Secondary School resumed on Tuesday, 29th October. And this is the NTN Nightly. Up next, Ryan O'Brien. You think you're invincible? You think it can only happen to certain people? Yeah, yeah man, be smart. Think. Love up when you love up. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, in collaboration with the North Castries Youth and Sports Council, 
inviting all youth of North Castries to Youth Connect, an introduction to youth development and council governance training seminar. This activity is scheduled to take place at the conference room of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Upper Miku Street, on Saturday, November 2nd, 2019, between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. In some upcoming primary schools football fixtures, a 16-team competition, matches set for October 29th, Crozelay takes on Rozo at the Sa Plain Field at 11 a.m. Ancillary plays Moshi at 1 p.m., also at the Sa Plain Field. Marsha takes on Camille Henry at the Marsha Grounds from 11 a.m., and RC Boys tackle Patricia James, also at Marsha Grounds, from 1 p.m. That's your update for today from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Empowering and enabling homegrown businesses is a key part of Invest St. Lucia's strategic objectives. To that end, Invest St. Lucia has already conducted a number of entrepreneurial activities towards the establishment of a business incubator and accelerator program with the intention to create economic opportunities and wealth for citizens stimulate economic development and diversification, including increasing exports, strengthen the business ecosystem to boost the creation of firms, as well as to improve small medium enterprise growth. Business incubation is a process of nurturing a business concept till it manifests as a startup company. If you own a startup in St. Lucia, the Business Incubator and Accelerator Entrepreneurship Hub can help with business support services that include mentorship, accounting, legal support, HR advice, business management, business planning, and IT support. Invest St. Lucia invites all local entrepreneurs to like and subscribe to its Facebook and to keep abreast of new opportunities to participate in, in its next cycle of business incubation and acceleration program. And stay tuned to the NTN Live. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. Paramus Hutchinson, who is usually here with the Nouvelle Arcoyol, is off. However, we have a comprehensive look at St. Lucia's celebration of Jeune Coyol. Janelle Norville reports on activities held at Beau Grossley. Patrons, the island over, descended on the Bossage Promenade to partake in the Jeune Coyol festivities. From local bread freshly baked on site to the sweet sounds of Chateau Coyol filling the air, patrons reveled in the cultural event. Patrons indicated that they have been looking forward to the celebration. While some came just to savor the Creole food, others came to partake in the singing and dancing. One patron expressed his hope that the younger generations will get involved in the activity and make it even better in the years to come. <laughs> Patron Matthew Hartman said he looks forward to the event and makes it his duty to attend every year. He highlighted the importance of maintaining such cultural traditions. 
Well, I've been living in Solution now for 12 years, well, 11 years permanently, but I, I've come a few times before. And cultural things, being an Englishman by birth, we recognize that, we want to maintain our culture. So we, we have these structures in place. Um, and things like in, in St. Lucia, we have the Creole language, which is spoken, it's not really written. We have to hand these traditions down because otherwise they die out. And the other festivals, the Flower Festival, the Marguerite Festival, if, if we don't hold on to these traditions, they're gonna go. So it's important, I, and I like to see this. This is the first time I come to the Beau Seju. Normally I go south, do a little around the island. Boiseju Grosile, Viewfort and Chozelle were the host communities for the 2019 Juniquil celebrations. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The sights and sounds of Juni Creole are as varied as the culinary dishes, and keeping tradition alive is very important to Millet resident Linus John. John attracted a lot of attention at the Boiseju promenade on Sunday, especially from the young ones, with his modernized version of the Kabui. He explained that the colors add vibrance to the Kabui, making it more attractive to children so that they are more likely to want one. Having learned the craft from his father, his goal is to keep the tradition alive and so he makes them and sells at several events. John added that his craft is an important part of his life as he enjoys making the cabaways. He notes that he is now passing on the knowledge to his children and the time spent together doing the activity is precious to him. For John, his craft is also a source of income, which he explained has been quite profitable. And speaking of profits, there can be no doubt that Juni Creole generates substantial economic revenues. Here's Janelle Norville with the on-site vendors. While patrons came with the view of enjoying the festivities, vendors had another thing in mind. The economic impact of Creole Heritage Month, and more specifically the Juni Creole celebrations, cannot be understated. Many vendors lined up at Boiseju looking to secure some sales. Vendor Anthony Tench said sales for the day had been going well. He traveled all the way from Viewport to share his special recipe. So I have to I have to TV, 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 Vendor Ursula Francis, more affectionately known as Joycelyn, indicated that celebrating Juni Creole is dear to her. She also provided a snapshot of her menu for the day. No still go through a visa no tene pou fe ya. Et pou joun, pou a poison mwen satisfe e pi mwen nye bagay ka ale. Bagay ka ale bie mersi mwen satisfe, mersi bodje. Ok, di nou ki sa ou ka van la? E ben mwen ka van, mwen ni, mwen ni, mwen ni, um... Kabas? Mwen ni hawasa, mwen ni lambo wi, mwen ni, mwen ni toti, mwen ni, um... Zaboka many cochon wusi, many boapek la moui, many poa rouge et puis la tche, many, 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 we go, many, many, tout bagay, tout sa, tout sa, kerol, te kapot, we lota, many sa.
Flora de Gazal said not only did she enjoy the day, she was able to capitalize on the festivities, earning revenue in the process. I'm enjoying it and the sale is coming good for me um, with the all the local products, uh, bakes, smoked herring, saltfish, pork, crab, cocoa, cocoa tea, again, pork, all the little variety of stuff. I have. It means a lot to me. I appreciate it and I love the events. Every year I'm looking forward to that. The June Quail festivities were held on Sunday, 27th October 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. And we will have coverage of Shozel and View 4 in subsequent broadcasts. Here now is a look at what's happening to us weather wise. Partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with widely scattered showers over the southern Windwan Islands. Elsewhere, it will be fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers. A weak tropical wave is expected to produce some cloudy periods with showers over the southern portion of the region during the next 24 hours. Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.29 p.m. and will be low again at 10 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 4.36 p.m. and will be low again at 11.27 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 6 to 9 feet or 1.8 to 2.7 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to rough seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.57 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.